There's a very thin line, my friends, a thin, razor thin line between sanity and, oh no, there's a raccoon head in my freezer. Thin line, sanity and insanity. That's actually one of the cool things about magic, because of course magic, I guess like the arts in general, but magic in a very explicit way, asks the question, what is real? Is this real? Is he real? Is he real? What is going on with that? Uh, speaking of reality, I am wearing sleeves. Okay. I really am wearing sleeves. And you're thinking, oh great, he's going to use a pull, or maybe he's going to try to top it. A hobbit. <laughs> top it a hobbit. I uh, know. Uh, but, uh, and the deck's real too. Okay, and in fact, I'm going to hand the deck to my brother, Chris. Here you go. Merry Christmas, brother. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa, all that stuff. Give the cards a shuffle. Make sure they're an ordinary deck of cards. He's giving them a shuffle with his very elegant hands. Nice. Cards a bit of a shuffle. I'm gonna come right over here. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Now Chris just shuffled the deck like a sane person. I have had people shuffle the deck in an insane way. I've had that happen. What they do is this. Watch carefully here. They do this. They take the cards and well, I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'll divide the deck in half. I'll put half the cards on the table. Then I'll take these two halves and watch. This is the sane way to shuffle the cards. I'm gonna do it very slowly. Now what makes this same is you're keeping all the cards facing the same way. Okay, they're all facing one way. That's an insane way to, or I should say a sane way, to mix the cards. Let me show you an insane way. And I have had this done. Uh, I, a drunk once did this. I also had a guy uh, who I think had just whacked his head many times with a hammer. This is the insane way, because you don't keep the cards going all one way. They're getting all mixed up. Now, obviously I do illusions, so let me be very clear here. Some are going face down, some are going face up, some are going this way, some are going that way. I bet I can even find cards, yep, right about there, cards going back to back. Now, this is the state of chaos. Watch, I'm gonna use a little magic here. I'm gonna move the state of chaos eight inches over here. And look, all the cards are mixed up over here. But if this is the insane, I guess it only makes sense that now here, all the cards are sane, all going the same way. Which still makes me wonder about that frozen raccoon head. There's a whole bunch of things I love about this trick. Uh, magicians seeing this trick sometimes find it almost confusing. And by that I don't mean they're fooled or baffled. I mean, they can tell early on, even as you start to put the cards and emphasize, cards are all going the same way. Magicians, anybody who's been doing card magic for even a year or two knows about triumph, divergence, triumph. And so I find magicians immediately start going, okay, so it's some sort of face up, face down card trick thing. And they're waiting for a selection or the tra they, they start getting ahead. And I, I swear I watch magicians' minds get all muddied with these other premises and it seems almost confusing to them. Stop. To lay people, the idea of this packet, clearly he's mixed them up in a certain way and this was just, and then this is state. That moment when I spread that first one and show them all face up and face down interlaced gets a great reaction. So I wanna caution you if you think for a second this seems complicated from an effect point of view, it is not, okay? They're not thinking about particular cards or suits or anything. It's just sort of a state in which things are chaos and a state in which things are ordered, sane and insane. So it should be out sane, really. I mean, in sounds like you're a member of out sane. Now that guy's out sane. You know, that's the problem with out sanity. This is totally impromptu. There's no setup, which I don't know about you guys, but I find with absolute, with tricks that are absolutely no setup, as I head into them, there's a comfort I feel. There's a looseness I feel, and I'm able to access, uh, you know, both my own kind of thoughts and feelings more readily and connect with people more readily. And that's something really, it's funny, I don't, I don't think I've really thought about this way before, that there's, because there's no setup, the impromptu has a feeling, not just for them in the sense of real magic, but also I find that it can really loosen up the performer as well, which is always a good thing. So you hand the deck to somebody and have them give them a mix up. You take the cards back and you're gonna, and you're gonna say to them, uh, hey, uh, you, you, handle, you shuffle the cards in a very sane fashion. Then I often turn to somebody else and say, it's probably the first time that guy's ever been called sane, right? Some sort of silly joke like that. And that gives me the misdirection for the couple of slights I need to do. 
Now this trick is 100% impromptu. There are no gimmicks. Uh, and once you've done your work at the beginning, the rest is smooth sailing. But boy, you do a couple of really advanced or at least intermediate slights right off the top. The first one you do is a one card. It's a one card, I'll do it a few times for you here. It's a one card pass to the bottom. Let me try it again. Try it again. Hopefully I'm not flashing too badly here. And as I'm passing the card to the bottom, I'm turning them face up, all right? So the exposed view is here. And this is basically what I'm doing. This is the broad stroke. I'm pulling a card around to the side and to the bottom. Around the side and to the bottom. And keep in mind, if I did it invisibly, but I still did this, it's still freaking weird, okay? It's still suspicious as hell. Huh, oh, okay? They'll think, oh my God, uh, Amadeus, Amadeus, he's possessed by a dark lord. So you have to be careful with that. You don't want to funk out your show with the suggestions of being possessed. And notice, he just shuffled the pack and I just dropped the line. Hey, you shuffled the cards, nice job. Uh, you sh shuffled them like a sane person. Probably the, la probably the first time he was ever referred to as sane, huh? There's a line, there's a spread from here to here, so there's lots of misdirection going on. And in that, I do my one card pass to the bottom. Okay. So you get one card on the bottom, face up. The next action I'm gonna do is a half pass. Now notice, as opposed to doing a one card pass to the bottom, you could do a half pass. And I'm about to show you a half pass, but a one card half pass is this action. Curled, first finger, left finger on the bottom, pushing it down, and you don't push it off to the side, you try to keep the whole thing, the whole action contained in sort of directly beneath the deck, okay? So it's here, but with my hand tilted forward, notice it's pretty much imperceptible, okay? I turned it over, and again, I turned it over. Pretty hard to see. So you might want to do that with the first card and the second, but just in my hands, I find taking the deck back, doing the one, one if I will for the edge, doing the one card pass really flows for me. But that's the first action. The second action, like I said, is I do a half pass. Here, what you're gonna do is a half pass with not half the deck, a quarter of the card. So I riffle from the back, get about a quarter of the deck, and I half pass that and keep a break with my pinky. So what is my state? Three quarters of the deck all running face down. The last quarter, is approximate quarter, is mostly face up except for one card and I'm keeping a break above that. So as I've said, insanity or insanity, great job. I say, you know, what, what is the difference between sanity and insanity? Well, I'll show you, real simple. Now I divide the deck in half, table half, okay? Or put it in someone's hand, always better if you can do that. It's just great when you give people stuff to hold on to in their hot, sweaty palms. Good night. Um, you give them that, that there and I've got this situation here. And I say, well, uh, you know, you shuffle them in the same way. In the same way, I guess, really, it's not too complicated. You grab one half and the other, and you're gonna just put them together here, okay? And you do it very slowly. Say, this is what sanity really is, is when you shuffle the cards, because they still don't quite know what you mean. What do you mean by insane and insane? Is it some crazy thing you're doing? Some laugh you're doing? <laughs> what is it? And in this case, you emphasize, no, the sanity is that all the cards are facing the same way. That's sanity. Put these down on the table or in someone's hand, okay? You could even say, as you give them, say, put your other hand on top. You say it as an aside, put your other hand on top. And what that does is it really is, is the dramatic, the sense is something's gonna happen to these. Put your other hand on top. Or you can cover it with a paper napkin, okay? Or uh, someone's drink or a candle off the table. I've used that in restaurants. You put the, the candle off the table right there and, or you put the deck on top and everything goes up in flames. Very dramatic. But you do that like that. Say now the insane, and now I'm gonna do the classic slop shuffle, okay? This is a classic slop shuffle. Gonna push off a few cards, turn them face up, then push off a few cards below those, turn the whole group over. Push off another four or five cards below that packet, turn the whole group over. Push a few more, turn the whole group over. You do it in a smooth fashion, okay? Like this, boom. This is crazy. This is what insane does. You mix some face up, some face down, some this way, some that. And I always say some face up, some face down, some this, some that. 
Now, in saying that I'm breaking one of the rules, one of the, one of the rules I try not to do, and that is I try not to spend a lot of my script describing what I'm doing. It's, it's, it's excessive. There's no need. They can see what you're doing. But in this moment, rather than saying, so you picked any card and you shuffled the pack and describing all the obvious things. Here, I really want to sub verbally support the illusion. So you shuffle cards. So, you know what's cra crazy is they shuffle them face up, same face down, and same face up, face down. Now we're showing this to Chris, Mr. Chris Mayhew, uh, just before the shoot here. And he mentioned a tip that he does that looks great in his hands. And that is just rather than the right hand turning over and turning over, turning over, you can do use both hands, right? You can push off some turnover, push off some turnover, turn these over, put some there, put some here, turn these over like this, like this. You can use both hands. Now, he showed to me a few times, and I gotta say, for me, I almost felt like this looked more confusing or suspicious, this idea. Not that I'm doing it perfectly the way he suggested it, but that's the idea. I kind of like, I find that there's almost a, a clarity to just the one hand turning. That's my sense. But I know that some of you guys are going to prefer uh, Chris's suggestion here. So either way, though, what you end up is this. You end up with the cards running face down and face up, divided like this. Okay. So what I do and is now I want to show them and I say and I cut low into the pack and show face down card, then cut near the top, face up card, then cut low again, then cut uh, sort of trying to show as many different cards. Now, you want to now you're going to clean up this deck with a cut. Mel Stover, I believe, is the creator of the Slop Shuffle. And uh, he uh, had the idea too of bending the cards in such a way that after you've done the illusion of mixing them up, you could then cut to the break. Okay, a cut because the, but I found I couldn't always depend on that. I was working in bars and clubs and after many years, what I do actually is a much more, uh, I mix the cards, blah, 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 and I say and I do the, uh, the false cut sequence where I'm cutting low to show a face down, cutting high, face up, and this, and I say, I bet I can even find cards going, yep, back to back. And now I verbally tell them I'm looking for cards and I find it emphasizes they're so mixed up I can even find cards going back to back or sometimes. I could even kind cards going face to face and I draw attention to it. Okay. That way I get it every single time. Now, as you separate the two packs and put them back together, all you do is flip the one in the left hand casually and close. Okay. So whether they're in this state, half face up on top. Okay. And whether you say, I'm going to find cards going back to back and let's see, I bet I can even find cards going back to back and you do that. I turn these over and everything's copacetic. Okay. Or if they're the other way, you're still going to turn over your left hand's half, okay? So where are we? They saw you shuffle these fairly. Face down cards into face down cards. They just saw you make a freaking mess of these. And there's no, again, all the slights were early. Everything else is just organic and convincing. Okay, there's no misdirection required. They can burn you from early on in this trick. Now, I used to, when I first was performing this, have someone this and I would do this magic thing, or I'd say here, we're gonna make the craziness from here, come over here, and over here, we're gonna calm them down, straighten them out. I used to, but I found, you know what really nailed it was moving this one card. So as I say now, and I don't do it quickly, I do it very slowly. So here's an example where I stretch the magic moment. Sometimes in magic, we want it to happen like this, but here you stretch it. It's gonna move the insanity, the chaos, from here over to here and then you either pick them up and spread them in someone's hand a table is great here because as soon as you do this I have got beautiful gasps with that moment because it really has this sense that you've transferred this impossibility now the fact that you have moved and again be clear here magicians the fact that you have moved this to this they don't immediately think okay now these are straight they don't think that at all in fact even my verbal even my scripting says I'm gonna move the insanity from here over to here, they're just thinking the insanity is bled over. Now they're both mixed up. So that's the, you could end there. But the fact that you can go, so now these are all crazy. And these are all sane. This gasp gets built on by this. If you watch your timing, you'll get a beautiful response here. And then this is on top of that. So this can get an even better response. It's a beautiful way to build the two. Now. Uh, last thing I wanted to mention here, it's, it's a beautiful trick, anytime, anywhere kind of thing in people's hands, on the table, real worker. Um, 
one of the things I wanted to mention is, okay, so now you're here and you've got half a deck mixed up. You know, do you, if you close there, do you put the cards away or what do you do? I just wanted to, but there's a bunch of you who'll know about this, but just in case you don't, if you're more of a beginner cardition here, probably the fastest way to straighten out is to simply go through an up jog. You don't have, you know, just up jog all the face up cards and then with a single action, you can straighten them up. Okay, so just a matter of seconds to straighten them up. I try to use presentations that I, on some level, really care about or have thought about. And that's one of the cool things, once you stop trying to learn your patter from the page of instructions that comes with a trick or even my crazy bullshit, when you find, you know, uh, good presentations, whether I think, whether you're a musician or a magician or whatever you do, ultimately the fuel you're looking for, the fuel that really makes the difference, is that you care about what you're saying. It's real for you. And that's what really starts to make your magic that much more powerful. When you incorporate as much of your reality into the fantasies or the unreality of what you do, it really starts to mess with people's head, makes it more credible, but at the same time, and the contrast gets really cool in that regard too. And the question is asked too, you know what? I don't go up to a couple of drunk frat boys and they go, you know, go, have you ever wondered the difference between sanity and insanity? Well, or maybe it should be out sanity. And I swing in with some puns. No, no, you know, you, I just go pick a card. Was that your card? No, how about this card? Good night. Boom. Okay. Situations I do, you know, I'm a professional, very experienced veteran worker. And so I can drop me anywhere, literally. Uh, some gigs, I don't do a lot of magic. You go in and it's funny how the room will tell you. I've gone to some gigs and you go in and you start to do your magic, magic. And they really kind of just want to chat. You do a trick and they go, oh yeah, you know, my uncle sort of does that. It's fascinating what you guys do. And rather than going... Yeah, it really is quite interesting. You see this paddle? You know, it's a turnoff. What you, you know, and you, you'll find it, the room will tell you, people will tell you. And what's really cool is most events, you won't go to one group and they want this, and this group wants that, because that'd be hard to get into a flow, right? I find if you go in loose and receptive, you can find the tone of the room. I still find every now and then some of my fans will leave a comment like, hey Jay, um, you know, do you sell tricks? I can't believe it, seriously. There are still some of you who don't realize, even though I don't do it all the time, but around here and there on the channel, I do mention, I do have a, a merchandise site. It's like a magic store online. I just want to explicitly say it for the few who aren't getting it as well, is sankeymagic.com. I'll leave a link at the end here, sankeymagic.com. There aren't a million products there. I have about 50 or 60. Uh, I've created many more than that, and released a whole bunch all over the place. But over the years, some of my stuff I find is good and some of it's better and the better stuff now, and you'll find most of the stuff there now that I've really built up over the last several years, all the newer releases and stuff at sankeymatic.com are only available there. It's the only place in the world you can get a lot of my newer and frankly, I think best stuff. Some of my old stuff that's been discontinued in other shops and things is also only available at sankeymagic.com. So something to keep in mind, uh, you'll find too, just speaking generally, you'll find that the pricing of most of my stuff is at least a little bit better than you'll find in general at other sites. And that's simply because I'm the creator, I'm the manufacturer, and I'm the marketer. So I can give, obviously there's profit margin there for me to pass on to my fans. And I know a whole bunch of you, I get beautiful emails all the time sort of saying, hey Jay, I want to get this directly from you because I know it's the best way to support you and your family and frankly, your drug habit. So for all those reasons, some more sankeymagic.com. Peace.